first meet with him? How are we abiding in him? Yeah. How are we hearing from him? Because it's only out of that place that we can minister powerfully and effectively to children. Hey everyone, welcome back to episode six of the Dad and Lad podcast. We're so grateful that you've joined us in this journey. And today we are looking at what is children's ministry. In this podcast, we talk about parenting, family, the church, um, grandparenting even. And now today we're looking at what is children's ministry. And maybe to start, why have we been defining all these different themes and ministries? Why is it important to make definitions of, of these topics, Dad? Oh, yeah, this is great to be able to get into this one. And, and it's vital that I think we talk about defining children's ministry, as you say. But that's, that's an interesting question. Why, why do we define things? I don't know about you, but I've recognized over the years, I've been in a number of discussions with people mm-hmm. and, and thought that we were talking about the same thing and even using language that sounded like that, but then quickly realizing that we were coming from two totally different points of view or, or yeah. different understandings of the topic and seeing it in very different ways and actually not m- managing to have a meaningful discussion because we we had a different understanding of terminology or a different definition of what we were talking about. So it seems to me that in order to, to have great dialogue within the realm of, of ministry at large, yeah. we need to define terms because that positions us to, to then speak about the subject matter more fully. And so I'm thrilled a bit that you've chosen to, to start us off with, with defining children's ministry so that as we dialogue together and as others listen and dialogue with one another and enter into this discussion in a broader sense, we're providing a framework of understanding for that discussion because that's what a definition does. Yeah, and I think before we get into this definition, I think it's just a good rule of thumb that in any theological conversation that you can have with a friend, a family member, or a colleague, or any sort of conversation in general, defining terms is a great way to keep things open, keep things, uh, making sure everyone sees the same picture, because when people are not clear, there's going to be... Um, so there's a lot of arguments and conflict and we don't, even within the church at large, one of the things we always want to strive for is unity. And one mm. of the great ways is practically we can do that, provide unity, especially on big topics, is to define terms yes. so that we know what we're talking about. I like that. And so what is children's ministry? What's your definition or the scripture union definition that we would hold to? Well, it's, it's sort of a scripture union definition, and it's sort of uh, my definition as I've thought of it over the years. Uh, it certainly ties in with our mission statement, our scripture union Canada mission statement. But here it is, uh, and I've got a few, but I think this is what I've narrowed it down to, which is probably my best at this point. Children's ministry is a process that connects children with Jesus and his story and each of those words is critical for me okay so it's a process Mm -hmm. of connecting children okay yeah because it's children's ministry with jesus and his story yeah when i say story i'm speaking about god's word so that's capital s and and that's recognizing god's word as the full meta narrative of start to finish genesis to revelation absolutely cool now, is there been a, has there been a key scripture that's kind of guided you in, in putting that, that definition together? There's lots of great scriptures, but the one that comes to mind as you ask me, uh, which I really love, is Colossians 1 and verse 17. And one might not naturally think of that as a scripture for, th- sure. for, for entering into this discussion of defining children's ministry, but here it is. It, it's a very simple scripture. In him all things hold together in him speaking about Christ yeah all things hold together um, and and for me the all things includes children's ministry mm. so I'm quoting that verse because that immediately moves to what my entire understanding and focus of the definition of children's ministry is that it's all about 
Jesus and it's all held together and directed mm. and sustained by Jesus. In him, all things hold together. Well, isn't that beautiful? Because it seems so simple yet so powerful when we think about it because often we can get lost in that and that's part of the definition that the goal of children's ministry is Jesus and he's mm -hmm. also the sustainer of it and mm -hmm. and um, that means that it goes beyond the schedules it goes beyond the training it goes beyond Absolutely. the coordinating it mm -hmm. goes beyond even the content it's how is Jesus leading this whole thing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so obviously when we're talking about children's ministry I think we're also within this definition we are particularly thinking more within the church context recognizing right. that We've had a previous episodes talking about family ministry and children's ministry involves all of that within the home and within the church space. But we're particularly there's, there's overlap with all these yeah, parts, isn't there? But we're particularly paying attention to within the church space. And um, I just want to break down some of these words. So the first word is that it's a process. Mm -hmm. um, can you can you can speak into what you mean by that? To elaborate a bit on that, yeah, absolutely. Um, Children's ministry, so, so let's start with what it isn't. Children's ministry isn't one-off events. It's not uh, a program per se. Sure. And that's why I like to use that word process. Because the word process speaks about that which unfolds over the course of time. It speaks about things that link together. Um, and it, it involves a series of actions or steps towards a desired end. Mm. Um, so, so that word process is a, is a, is a wonderful uh, word in and of itself. And, and it speaks more practically, if we were to make that more practical, to, uh, to, to how children's ministry needs to begin with, because a process always has a beginning point and, and an ending point, how it needs to begin with inviting children to connect with uh, Jesus, which is the latter part of this yeah. definition. Uh, it, it speaks to how that connecting process needs to develop um, as the grace and glory of Jesus is revealed. Um, and, and it speaks to how uh, it's something that needs to happen in partnership with, with God, certainly through the work of his Holy Spirit um, and being enlivened by him. Because process involves interactivity mm. of, in this case, various parties. There's God himself involved. There are those of us who are adults involved in it. And there are those of us, those who are children. Mm. Um, and all of those together in a process. The, the ideas that come to mind when we just look at the word process of children's ministry is the fact that there needs to be consistency and faithfulness. I like that. And in order to ensure that children know the consistency and faithfulness of God, which mm -hmm. he is the one that will always be consistent and faithful and we are faithless, he is faithful. And in order, but in order for us to show that in the most beautiful way, we need to have champions that are also consistent and faithful and recognize that mm -hmm. their commitment to the next generation is not just a program or not just a, a commitment on one Sunday, but it's, oh, I'm committed to the process of seeing this child grow up within the church, and I want to be a consistent, faithful presence of pointing them to Jesus. And whether they are involved directly or whether it's more of an indirect involvement, they have that champion mindset of, I want to be faithful. Um, when I think of that, I think of people that come to mind. One one lady in particular who, uh, in a kids' ministry pro program that I've been serving at, but she doesn't see it as a program. She's been involved for many, many years, and she's a grandma, and she's so loved by the children uh -huh. uh, at the church. And she, at this point, she her title or role is she's a hall monitor. Okay. Yet, in that sense, that doesn't give it justice because she does everything, and all the kids love her. And even just last night when we were when we were doing the Bible time, and there's one child who has particular challenging times uh, being involved with the story. Uh -huh. She comes in this lady and she sits right next to him and every time she's prodding him to go answer questions and when he answered a question she went yes and made a big fist pump in the air and he had the biggest smile because she champions for him and so many others because she loves the process of just being involved right. uh, with the in these children's lives 
Um, later, I was actually talking to her and I asked about that child. Oh, that child actually knows a lot about the Bible. It seems like he uh, knows so much. Does he go to this mm-hmm. church? Um, and she said, no, but he's come to the kids program on our midweek program for, for a few years now. And I've tried to do all I can to pour into him. And so I was thinking, wow, process is defined by people who are consistent and faithful. Thanks for sharing that story. What I like about it and what also comes to mind, which I think is maybe a parallel word to process is the word journey, because what you're describing there is a lady who has recognized that somebody needs to journey with that child. And she's made a point of doing that. And if we're going to see faith formation happen successfully with children, we need to see it as as a journey, if I can change the language from process uh, as well. So that's very cool. Thank you. Yeah. And and so now I guess kind of connected with that idea of process, um, the word connect. Right. Um, Speaking more into the relational aspect of things, but connection in this case, connecting children with Jesus and his story. But let's just look at the word connect. What else can you speak into from that word? Yeah, so the word connect is such a rich word for me. Uh, I I think of it all the time. And, and, And I especially like the fact that the word connect for me brings up the word relational. You... When you say connect, I'm thinking relational. I'm thinking relationships. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm thinking of vertical relationships, connecting children vertically with Jesus. And I'm thinking horizontal relationships, connecting children with uh, the faith community, uh, with other believers of all ages. Uh, When I think connect, I'm thinking of of building and, and nurturing those relationships. Uh, and if I go back to the vertical relationship, I'm thinking of how do we help children get captivated uh, uh, by Jesus? Um, as I think of the word connection, um, I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning, I'm dreaming about, if you like, how children can see the glory and the wonder and the beauty and the majesty. And there's lots of adjectives we yeah. could put in there of Jesus, right? And increasingly see that, um, you know, just mechanically as I think about it, uh, if, if, you, if you're bolting a, a frame together or one of those Ikea yeah, yeah. <laughs> things that we buy where you yeah, have all the instructions <laughs> and everything, oh, you know, everything's going to be connected, right? And, and that in itself is a process back to that word, but it takes time. Yeah. But as you slowly make those connections, you eventually end up with your chair that you bought from sure. IKEA. And and that's what we th- what we need to think about with children's ministry. You know, it's it's connecting the pieces, primarily relational pieces, so that we move towards forming something that is whole. Which is interesting because I think a lot of our emphasis within children's ministry in the church is connecting the pieces pieces of content like they need to right. know these doctrines and these are all important things but do we think about how uh, so much of our work of championing children's ministry also means meaning we need to connect children to others right and and obviously that goes to the sticky faith study which we've mentioned before needing children to have many faith influences in their life mm-hmm. um positive faith influences connecting those relationships connecting those mentorship role models um, connecting things intergenerationally. Um, but that is part of what it means to bring faith formation, connecting not just the content of Scripture, but also right, right. the people who are who are Christ's followers with children. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and then I would yet want to emphasize that the primary connection, the most important connection in children's ministry is that connection with Jesus. Yes, which... Let's jump into that um, in a moment. And so that is going to be the main aspect of where we need to head is ultimately beyond just the content, children need to meet with Jesus and having a living relationship with him. Thanks so much for listening to the Dad and Lad podcast. We've been talking about why it's so important to define terms. And as we've been defining what is children's ministry, we've been recognizing that people are more important than programs. 
I want to encourage you to go to our Scripture Union bookstore online, and there you'll find a free resource on how to create a written children's ministry strategy. This will be super helpful for you in your church context. All right, let's jump back in. Connecting children with Jesus and his story. That's what we're talking about, and that's what's so important. Dad, within that definition, when did that click for you, the idea that it needs to be about connecting children with Jesus? Oh, you know, that reminds me, as you asked that question, of when I was church planting years ago. And uh, and a mother came and told me this story uh, a week after it happened. So what had happened was her child was in our children's ministry, uh, what we call kids' church. And they had got home that Sunday and she had said to her daughter, so, you know, how, how was kids' church today? And her daughter looked a little down and she sort of looked at her and said, what, what? And then her daughter said, almost tearfully, I didn't meet with Jesus today, or I didn't hear Jesus. I can't remember what it was. It was either I didn't hear him or I didn't meet with him. Hmm. Wow. And, the, and the mother came and, and told our kids ministry team and you know they'd been doing everything right they had been doing experiential games and they'd been focusing on the scriptures they'd be doing memory verses they were making it fun but they had missed the most important part of this and they realized that when they heard from the mother Hmm. because we can do all those things but if we don't connect the children with Jesus we have missed what it's all about and, you know, that brought us all up short. We, we all stopped and reviewed that and started asking, what does children's ministry look like if the primary aim is for the children to meet with or to hear Jesus? Hmm. So, and I'm still thinking about that. I haven't got all the answers yeah. on that. But it, it was so powerful and it impacted our hearts and our thinking so very deeply that it's still very much with me today. What's so powerful about it, and I think what needs to keep us in that place of awe and mystery, is the very fact that there comes to a point where we need to recognize that children's ministry can't just be over-programmed and over-put together, Mm. and even our best intentions will fail if we do not have the power of the Holy Spirit who reveals Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And how do you speak about that, that mystery of, ensuring that children's ministry teachers and leaders and actually beyond everyone who is called God's people um, and wanting to impact the next generation, which we should be, is being led by the Holy Spirit in connecting children with Jesus. And that, I think, just requires the onus to start on us. Hmm, where, where are we at? Because if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we're able to we're able to be in touch with that. We're able to be in touch with him in, in, in leading children in that way. We can't just speak about Jesus in, in this way without actually being led by the Holy Spirit in this way. And so, yeah, I, I like that. And I like how you're turning that. Maybe we should keep that for another sure. episode at some point, because it's the whole question of how do we first meet with him? How are we abiding in him? Yeah. How are we hearing from him? Because it's only out of that place that we can minister powerfully and effectively to children. Mm-hmm. And if we're not there, well, children's ministry is going to be sapped of the vitality that it needs to have. I think at this point, I just want to say... That often when we are talking about ministry things, we can get overcomplicated and maybe a bit confused within, am I even doing this right? And I just want us to stop right now and say, when we're doing children's ministry, if we have his word and the Holy Spirit, we have more than enough. Right. And a focus on him. (laughs) And a focus on him. We have his word and his Holy Spirit, which leads into our last question. But it's a process that connects children with Jesus and his story, his word. But I like the word story that you use. How are we to, as you put, how are we to show children and develop children to both indwell the story of God, but also be indwelt by the story? What do you mean by that? Yeah, let me back up and I'll answer that question in just a moment. 
But I want to back up by saying this. The reason why that's part of my whole definition is that I recognize that children's ministry uh, exists because we have content. It exists to be a, a, a means to inform children about the person and work of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so that's why this is so important. And, and, and I think we also need to recognize in this definition and, and this use of connecting children with his story uh, that, that the word of God needs to be fundamentally woven into every facet of what we do. Uh, you know, if, if, if the word of God is marginal, if the word of God is, is an afterthought, then we have missed the whole yeah. thrust of what children's ministry uh, should be and, about. And within that, recognizing that it's in God's word that children are able to primarily meet with Christ. Absolutely, because it's it's the place where where Christ is primarily revealed. Absolutely. Um, and if we are not focusing on the word, and and then as you say, we've chosen to use that word story, and I think for a number of good reasons. One, because eighty percent of the scriptures are narrative. Yeah. Uh, but two, because children are naturally storied. Yes. They they think in story. They engage with life as story. The the educational process that they involved in. Uh, certainly from the literacy point of view, is built on the development of stories. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a natural uh, realm for us to, to work with children. And then, of course, uh, to prioritize and to teach children that the greatest story of all, capital S, mm -hmm. is the story of God working with us and interacting with us and redeeming us, etc. Uh, that's why it's such a great word. Yeah. It, within all this, we will get to practical implications, and I think we need to do a part two of what is children's ministry next week, where we look more into the theology and practical. But right. just want to camp out here to give our listeners at least one takeaway of a practical way of, of showing how this is possible, is storying God's word. Um, one of the things I like to do when I'm teaching mm -hmm. is after I've read the word in a, maybe a creative or fun way, I then ask the children, okay, in pairs, or if there's one bold um, volunteer, can you retell the story in your own words? And if not, I can always retell it in my own words, story it back in a creative mm -hmm. and um, narrative way. Because that, when you story it in that oral kind of way, just like scriptures were back in the den mm -hmm. created, it, there's a powerful effect um, through the ear, listening it through a story lens after you've then just read it. So anyway, that's just one practical piece. No, 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 I like that. I like how you've how you've brought in a methodological piece to to this discussion. Because what you're saying is as we embrace God's word as story and as we use story type methodology, mm -hmm. uh, what we end up doing is we 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 take God's word uh, in a way in which it becomes a unifying word through which Jesus can make himself known to children. Yeah. And and so, yes, absolutely. That's I, I love how you've how you've brought that in. And then the next step is recognizing that in the same way that we the God's word, we need to help children understand the fullness of God's word and how Jesus is the main character through it all. We need to also, like you say, be indwelt by the story. Allow children to be indwelt by the mm -hmm. story. Meaning mm -hmm. we need to have children see that they are part of this story as well. And I guess the next step is within those scriptures, showing the necessary applications of how, how we are living into that today. Um, and one practical way, I just think the top of my head is even the other day, I was retelling part of the Easter story as we're coming up to Easter now uh, with my daughter. And later on, she turned to my wife uh, and said, mommy, um, I will be a disciple and you be a Pharisee. Okay. <laughs> so she's, she's not even three yet and she's really thinking, okay, I, I want to be part of the story. So she's like now re role playing. So she's getting this. this. She's stepping she into she the story. She was role playing the story. Right. And then, so, my, so then my wife uh, was, 
I'll just say mom her was saying, okay, um, what do you think you're doing? And then my daughter repeated, what do you think you're doing? And then they went back and forth and then it was just kind of funny. And then later on, uh, she went up and said to, to my wife, okay, I will now be a Pharisee and you be a disciple. And so <laughs> they're like, okay. Uh, and then with all of that, uh, my daughter then put up her finger and put a funny face on and said, I'm going to kill you. And at this point, we didn't know if we should be shocked, which we were, to cry or laugh. But it's because she understood the gravity of the story of how the Pharisees, mm -hmm. as she was putting it together, were the ones that orchestrated Jesus' death and the disciples wanted, wanted to take out the disciples. And now she was role-playing. And I just think of how when kids can enter into a story just in, in the way my daughter did. And if we can allow kids to enter into God's word, but ultimately so that they can meet with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if that can be in their minds, that's going to be powerful. Yeah, so. I, thank you for sharing that because it, it reminds me of probably another podcast we should do as well, which is on the whole subject of, of how we work with children to help them identify uh, characters in the story and how they connect with that. Yeah, how how we help them use their sanctified imagination to relate to characters in the story, right, and so on. So, your story then, but <laughs> all of those little bits in well, there. Well, <laughs> maybe on that front too, as we're still learning within this dad and lad podcast, we would encourage you as our listeners to to email us to connect with us, and maybe there's a particular topic that you want us to cover, or a particular question that you have within children, family, or within parenting. Um, we would love to explore that and do some research and, and put together some future episodes. Mm -hmm. So next week we'll do a part two on what is children's ministry. But thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. God bless. So what is children's ministry? Our definition is the process of connecting children with Jesus and his story.